Okay, so let's take a look at some more of these practice. I'm not going to do all of them, but I'll get you started on them. All right, so on this one, we've got f of x equals negative 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 1. So we want to do the vertex, the axis, symmetry, the solutions, the zeros, the range. Is it a max or a min? So let's start off. Let's just put it in our calculator first. Let's just go to y equals, and let's put in negative 2, parenthesis, x minus 3, oops, times x plus 1. Let's just graph it so we can see what it looks like. Okay, so I can see everything pretty clear on there. Let's do second table, and let's see if we can find that vertex. Look for those doubles, and right here at 1, 8, that is my middle point, so that's going to be my vertex. So I'm going to do 0, negative 1, 2, and 3, 0, 6, 6, 0, oops, 0. Okay, that's really all I need. So I can see the vertex is at 1, 8, which means the axis has the letter X in it, is at 1. It's wherever this is. The solutions, what are the zeros? Well, I can see those right here. The zero solutions are at negative 1 and 3. The zeros are negative 1 and 3. The range, and is it a max or a min? Well, I can see that it's a maximum. You go up, you hit a maximum point right there at 1, 8. So I'm going to say it's a maximum. I'm going to go over 1 and up. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 8. And then I'm going to do negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. The y-intercept is at 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right there. Okay, so it looks something like that. So the range, I'm looking at the y value. y is always down here. So the highest y value is 8. The highest I go is 8. I'm always, my y value is always less than 8. It never gets above 8. So I'm just going to say y is less than or equal to 8. All right, so the other one, you're just going to plug it into the calculator. Really, you might notice it is, uh, actually, it's the same thing. f of x negative 2 x. Oh my goodness, it's like the same thing. So, yeah, let's just do this. If you get this one, make this one a positive. I think that's what that was supposed to be. Make that one a positive. And then you'll do the same thing, but you're going to notice it's just going to flip that graph up. All right, so then you come down here and you want to write quadratic um, regressions. So what we're going to do on your calculator, hopefully you have your calculator, you're going to do stat, edit. And if this is full, remember you can do second plus 712, or... You can do go up to the L1, hit clear, and then move back down, and that will clear it out. We need to put all this information, all this data, into our calculator. So I'm going to do 1, enter 7, enter 13, enter 19, ooh, 19, 25, 31, 37, 43, 49, 55, 61, 67, all right. And on the other side, I'm going to do 93, 107, 125, 148, 174, 203, 237, 274, 316, 361, 410, and 462. All right, so I've got everything in there. You're going to go to stat, calculate, quadratic regression, which is number five, enter all the way through, and here it is. Write the quadratic regression modeling the data in standard form. It gives it to me in standard form. We're going to do three significant figures, meaning um, we're going to take the first three numbers. So we're going to say y equals 0 0.053, and that will be x squared. Remember, the a has the square on it. And then we've got plus 1.3. Okay, so this 9 is going to round that 8 to a 9. 1.99x, and then plus 90 point, and that 6 is going to round that 6, so that will be a 7. And there's our equation. 
All right, so you'll do the other one on there. And then we'll do the last one. Given the x-intercepts of negative 4 and 2 and an a value of negative 1, write the quadratic equation in, ver in standard form. So this is giving it to us in vertex form. Vertex form is when you have a times, uh, let's see, x minus the, I can't remember what we actually write there, x minus, like x, hmm, and what, oh, uh, x minus, Okay, I can't remember what my form was. I drew a blank. But we put the a value first, which is negative 1. And then we want to do vertex form, x and x. This is negative 4. It was equal to negative 4. So that means x is always a lie when you put them back in. So when we plug in negative 4 right here, it's a line. It's not negative 4. It's positive 4. And when you plug in the other 0 of 2, it says it's positive 2, but we know he's lying and it's actually negative 2. Now they didn't want us to write it in that form though. They wanted it in standard form. So once you get it like this, now we have to do negative 1 times x plus 4 x minus 2. We're going to double distribute here, double distribute here, add those middle terms, and then we're going to multiply by negative 1 at the very very end. So your answer should be something like y equals negative x squared, something, 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 something. Okay. So multiply all this first, combine like terms in the middle, and then multiply by the negative 1. All right, I'm going to keep going on this video. On this one right here, we are writing it in standard form, I believe. Yeah, we're just writing it in standard form. Oh, here we go, standard form in the zeros. So on this one, remember when we're doing the zeros, we're going to take 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 7. If we want to know the zeros, we want to know where it crosses that axis. Divide both sides by 2. So I end up with x minus 2 times x minus 7 equals 0, because 0 divided in half is still 0. Set each of those, x minus 2 equals 0 and x minus 7 equals 0. This gives me x equals positive 2 and x equals positive 7. So I'm going to say 2, 0 for my x-intercept and 7, 0. My zeros are at 2 and 7. Standard form. We're going to have to do double distributing. So we're going to do 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 7. x times x. Remember, I'm going to keep that 2 out front till the very end. That will be x squared minus 7x. Underneath, negative 2 times x will be negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 7 will be positive 14. In the middle, put those together. So 2 times x squared minus 9x plus 14. Now multiply everything by 2. 2x squared minus 18x plus 28. So 2x squared minus 18x plus 28. That one works the same. Looking at the graph, can you label everything? I feel like you can do that as well. Label all the key features. Vertex, you can see that this one has a vertex right, let's see. I believe our vertex, we're going to call that spot right there, 0, 0 as our vertex. Axis symmetry, solution, range, domain, yep, yeah, you should be able to do all that. Now on this particular one, we're looking at height over time. Kind of, so maybe somebody threw something down the water or something, that's what this is. So your domain is not going to be all real numbers. Because if you're looking at time, time can't be negative over here. This part of the graph does not exist. So your domain starts at zero and continues on for forever. So we'll say from zero to positive infinity. Your range, how tall is it? Well, it hits zero right here and then it, it just keeps coming down, right? So your range is going to be y is less than or equal to 0. So be careful when you're doing that. All right.